So I've just been asked a great question about regaining your confidence after a crash or regaining your confidence after a series of crashes or a series of injuries or just a series of bad luck or uh, maybe you've just been out of the game for quite a while and been surrounded by other people with injuries and uh, it's in your head or you, you, you're really tentative about progressing and you, you just can't find that you can't find that stride that you used to have or that you've been looking for. Uh, and some people haven't reached that stride at all yet and yeah, maybe they're tentative of, of getting to where they want to go. So it's no secret that I've had a couple of decent crashes and, and a couple of decent injuries. So 2010 broke my arm really bad, uh, broke a heap of bones in my forearm, or bo broke both the bones in my forearm, uh, a couple of bones in my wrist, crushed a nerve. It took me a, basically a year. It was eight months before I could ride again. So it was nasty. Uh, I've just previously done these uh, ribs. Obviously, I'm nursing that stuff now. Uh, and the shoulder, which really is coming back pretty good. So number one, I'm always confident that I'll heal. I'm always confident that I can get better. Uh, I eat reasonably well, apart from a bit of junk food. And you know, like we all do, I indulge in, in some rubbish sometimes too often. But I do look after myself. Uh, I don't drink too much. I don't get too crazy. Uh, so for one, I know that I can heal. And two, the most important thing is skills acquisition. So it's not, to me, I don't look at my performance or my ability as I'm really fast or I, or I ride really fast or, or this is the level I'm at and I want to get back to that level. I ride my bike as if it's something I enjoy every day. I'm not looking to be at a certain level or be better than somebody or, or anything like that. I'm just trying to be as good as I can. So... Over the years, I've watched other riders. I've watched the legends of the sport, Sam Hill. Uh, yeah, I could name them for days. I could name them literally for days. But all the good guys that we grew up watching, Petey, uh, Manar, Bruni, Brozzo, Conor Fearon, all of, the, all of the kings, all of the hitters. And I've always wanted to learn how to ride like them, how to, how to improve my riding to be able to more or less look like they look on the camera and feel as though I'm achieving things when I go out to ride and I'm I'm getting better. So, like I said, skills acquisition. For me, going out, cutties, wheelies. Cutties are corners. Cutties are basically corners on the flat that you're not completing. So you're just creating a little corner, you're looking for grip where there's no grip, uh, and you're purposefully finding the edge of your tires constantly. If you want to see someone cutty really, really well, uh, Will Rishbeth is killer at cutties. He's, he's really, really good at cutties, um, and he smashes on an e-bike. Um, and Bryn Atkinson. You look at Bryn Atkinson, that dude is the king of cutties. So, and he's the king of corners, coincidentally. So he really, really corners hard and really, really cutties hard. Now, when it comes to technical riding or, or stuff that's kind of, you know, not in your wheelhouse or making you feel those those feelings of doubt or those you know killing your confidence sapping you of confidence things like that don't ever do something that i know you, everybody says you should do a thing a day that scares you you should do things that scare you but if your confidence is already lacking don't do things that scare you do things that breed more confidence so you know a line that's kind of tricky but but you're confident that you can do it do it and do it better and do it better and do it better it's not about trying to do things faster or or being the fastest in your category or the fastest in your state or the fastest in your country or the fastest in your world it's about being as good as you can be and as precise as you can be so if you want to improve your confidence improve your precision and to improve your precision you have to go out and acquire skills cutties jumping skills and again with the jumping, do the jumps that you're confident with. It, you don't have to, oh, but I'm not going to ever progress if I don't do things that are too hard for me. Well, you're not going to pro progress if you keep crashing on things that are too hard for you as well. So you've got to find the happy medium. And you've got to, for me anyway, I like to do things that I'm already confident with. And people will say, oh, yeah, you know, but you ride the same trails all the time, or, or which I don't. I ride, you know, I ride all the trails in Adelaide. Um, well, most of them anyway. But I end up riding a lot of the same trails all the time as well because I want to get as good as I can at those trails, at riding those trails. And being really good, being really familiar with a trail helps my confidence and it helps me be really, really good on a certain trail. 
And then when I go into state or I go to trails that I don't know or riding in an area that I don't know, I've got I've got stuff to lean on. I've got past experience to lean on that makes me confident that I can ride certain obstacles and, and, and certain things like that. So definitely practice on stuff you're comfortable with. But push your limits a little bit on the stuff you're comfortable with. Not on the stuff you're not comfortable with. Pushing your limits where you're uncomfortable can yield huge benefits, but it can also yield huge consequences. So be mindful and be careful and progress with confidence. So don't be scared to take little little chances and little risks as long as you're armored up. You've got all your protection on, so knee guards, elbow guards, full face helmet. I'd never, ever, ever like seeing people riding without a full face helmet. It absolutely hurts me. When I see, you know, it's none of my business, obviously, but I've crashed on my face before. When I was a kid, I hurt my face pretty bad. Uh, I've seen people smash their teeth. I've seen people smash their face. It is ugly. And you know what? It happens like that. It happens on the, you know, you could just be out riding with the kids or doing something silly and, you know, you're going down a trail. Oh, no, I'm just going to take it easy today because I'm showing my wife around or whatever. And then, bang, you clip a pedal because you're running long cranks or or something was there that you didn't know was there and you're off, you know, you, you hurt yourself and you're face first. And you could be in a dire situation. You could be, you know, that's literally the front of your brain. So uh, protect it at all costs. Protect yourself at all costs. And bike setup. If you're un if you're not very confident, there's a chance that your bike potentially might not be set up that well. It might be it might be riding you. The bike might be riding you on certain trails. So spend your time setting your bike up correctly uh, and believe in yourself. 100%. You have to believe in yourself. If you're not confident about something, don't do it. Don't do it. Back in the day, Alan Hepburn. I was at City Dirt trying to learn how to jump. And Alan Hepburn gave me some of the best advice I've ever been given. So two dudes. Steve Gieber gave me wicked advice, told me to stay off the brakes. Pretty basic, but it helps. Um, and Alan Hepburn, jumping, when it comes to jumping or tricks or anything like that, he literally just said to me, if you can't do it three times in your head successfully, you probably can't do it. So use the... Uh, I guess it's manifestation or whatever. He just said, do it three times in your head, and if you can land it in your head, you're pretty much going to be able to do it. You're going to be able to do it. So uh, carry that on. If you're at a spot that's sketching you out or whatever, or you're trying a new section with your friends, don't get pulled into the peer pressure of, oh, I should do it because everyone else is doing it, and I don't want to feel like a pussy because I'm not riding the section that all my cool friends are riding. doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. At the end of the day, you're still going to go down the pub, still going to have a laugh with your friends. Uh, they're still going to be your mates. They're still going to love you. No one hates on anybody because they can't ride as well as they, you know, the next person can. Because we're all trying to have fun. That's all we're doing. Um, and if you're judging other people on how well they ride, then maybe your head's in the wrong spot in the first place. So, confidence. Don't do anything under peer pressure. And just slow progression. Slow progression will yield the greatest results. Uh, protect yourself at all times and get a lesson get a coaching lesson for sure get a coaching lesson if you uh yeah if your skills are lacking and you're sure that your skills are lacking and that's that's what's stopping you definitely get a coaching lesson or watch some of my videos i've got heaps of videos how to's cornering cutties jumping all sorts of stuff watch them and go out and just test yourself just test yourself confidently don't do anything that scares you too much and once you start developing that uh, experience of I got it again, I got it again, I got it again, getting better and better and better. Then you can start uh, be objective about your skills. Then you can start uh, taking some more risks, educated risks. Okay, so I don't want anybody hurting themselves. That's the whole reason I started this thing. I want people to learn quicker and get better uh, without having to go through all of the perils that I've gone through and that so many people go through with trying to get fast. It took me years and years and years and years and years to look like I know what I'm doing on a bike. And I'm not bragging, but I'm I'm much better than I used to be. Uh, I'm still nowhere near you know, the level of guys that are racing professionally or even the guys, these state level guys. You know, We've got some guys that are always on the top of the podium that you know, I'd kind of strive to be, to be like as well. They've just got some pace and, and some skill and some commitment. Um, but I've gotten here through 
practice, 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 and always being confident in myself. If I'm not confident, I won't ride it. Don't ever get caught up, and I'm saying it again, I'm just repeating it. Don't ever get caught up in the peer pressure of, oh, I should do that because everyone else is doing it. If you don't feel confident, just sit it out. Go, nah, nah, and even, you know, a little bit of self-deprecation. Just go, nah, nah, I'm feeling like a pussy today. I'm not going to do it. You know, have a laugh. Let everybody else have a laugh at you. It's not the end of the world that people are laughing at you or laughing with you. You're better off to have people laugh with you than at you. So, uh, I guess that's it. That's, that's the long and short of it. Set your bike up right. Practice your skills and be confident. And don't fall for any peer pressure bullshit because it's, it's all in your head. Everything's in your head. They say with golf and it's with everything. Golf is 80% mental and the rest is in your head. And I think riding is a lot like that as well. So I can go out and feel in the wrong environment, I don't ride that well. In the right environment, I absolutely feel like I'm shredding. So... Um, and there's nothing to do with one day I had skills and one day I didn't. It's all in here. It's all just ticking over in there. How you feel about yourself and how you feel about your surroundings. Are you a little nervous? Is your heart rate a little up because you're around certain people and you're trying to perform or something like that? Pay attention to how you feel inside because that will steer how well you can execute the skills that you have acquired. Um, so confidence will improve your skills hugely, hugely and a lack of confidence will just keep degrading them just keep degrading them so if you don't feel confident don't ride it never ever hurts to have a little break um but get out on your own and acquire some skills just do the, do the things that that matter even if it's just on the bitumen road out the front here just doing lefts and rights doing figure eights you'll eventually learn the technique film yourself that is the number one absolute number one this is how this all started for me is just filming myself trying to be better trying to be better you know, Sam Hill looks like he's, you know, the way he corners. Back in, you know, when I was, I was it, 2008 I started racing. Watching, looking at Sam Hill on the front of the Revolution mag and stuff like that. I wanted to look like that. And that I figured if I can learn how to make my body and my bike look like it looks like with him, then it should work. I should be able to put more grip down and hold more speed in the corners. And watching guys like Dave West and Connor and... Troy and Yatesy and you know, all the all the dudes that have always been kind of leading the charge. Gebert, watching how they create speed down trails, I just kind of look, you know, look cover right check. I copy it. You know, monkey see, monkey do. And so far, so good. I'm getting better and uh, I'm always getting better. I'm 35 now and I'm much better than I was when I was 25, I'll tell you that much. So I love it and I just, now I'm, I'm healing, I'm having a heap of time off. But I'm not scared at all that when I go back, I'm going to lose all my pace because pace doesn't exist to me. It doesn't. None of that stuff exists until you turn your Strava on or until you start timing yourself, which I won't do until I feel like I'm back up to speed. If I want to time myself down a run, I'll do it once I'm confident and I feel like I'm going fast. So, comparison is the thief of joy. Don't ever forget that. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. Just work on your skills and have fun. If you're not smiling underneath your helmet, uh, reset, reset, start again, and have another crack. So I hope that answers your question. Probably doesn't. There's a million. There's there's so so many things that I could rattle around in my brain to to come out. But 13 minutes in, uh, I think I've said enough. And uh, maybe I'll make another one. I'll make a part two down the track when I've uh, thought about it a bit more. But this is just a bit of food for thought for now. So thanks for asking, and I'll keep punching them out.